Hey there, cons. Misconduct here, back with part four of our tutorial series where we're going to be talking about combat landings and uh, all the techniques involved in doing them. So, at this point, I've already assumed that you've done a whole bunch of practicing in the editor, um, probably with the damage off for a good long time, and then hopefully with the damage back on again for just as long or longer, and you're able to fly around in the city pretty uh, pretty confidently between the houses. So that's going to become really handy when you do any kind of landing. So I'm going to go with basic techniques here. There are basic ideas that you're going to have to use and adapt to as your individual landing forms. So each landing is going to be different like a snowflake. They're not ever going to be two identical ones. Maybe you can come close to replicating them. I'm going to do my best to do that, but we will likely not see any two landings be exactly the same. And that means being an adaptive pilot for multitude of reasons, um, not least of which is being ready to be faced with the enemy at any given time, right? So we want to approach our LZ at a high rate of speed, I say 200 or better. Um, basically you want to practice doing it like that because anything slower is basically easier. We want to estimate some kind of landing zone, usually based on friendly troops in the area, and uh, try to land near them and reinforce them. So, Z, S, balance state, almost, balance state, hover. All right. I call that a mediocre example. We're going to do that again. Because practice, practice. We don't have to hit our estimated landing zone on the mark. We can kind of land anywhere near there once again. So not worrying about that part, but we are trying to do it quickly. So for these first few, including that one, no pedals involved. Uh, pedaling is super handy, but for getting just the, the breakdown of how to bleed speed. We're going to just roll into our turn, uh, roll into our uh, our landing. We're going to use collective lower, cyclic backward, and, um, and roll into it all at the same time. Balance state, hover, and go. So in some ways that was a better one, and but I think it was actually slower. We're going to try that again, and maybe try to sharpen it up. But again, these are not using pedals yet. So one more like this, maybe come in from the other side. Must be able to go in both directions. Some adaptive flying at the last second there. Ready for anything, including our own mistakes. Get those troops in safely and get out of there. Okay, so this time we're going to come back in. Again, high speed. And I'm going to pedal into the turn. Just going to get the tail up and create sort of a vortex effect where we are using the maximum amount of downforce from our blades to go against the momentum of our helicopter. And we finish up our turn. Now, in this one-shot reel that I'm doing here, um, you're going to see examples that may, may or may not be that good. But uh, I think that was a decent example of how to do it, and it can certainly be done faster, and uh, including by you. And um, so you can just uh, outdo me there. You just practice, and you'll uh, you'll do way better than that one. Let's try again. Pedaling in again. Yeah, 
And getting out of there. Alright. Far better example, I think. We're going to do one more of those. And then I'll show you the pedal out turn that I like to use more recently. Which is, uh, I don't know, I guess it's basically an S turn. And you're kind of doing all of the, that stuff right at the very end. So, we'll get to that in a second. This is one more pedal in turn. And land. And go. Alright. So those are good quick landings, and if you practice them, you will get very, very good. Again, use the damage off helicopter for as long as you want. I'm using it right now. I guess that's kind of helpful for making a tutorial, though. So what I want to show you now is a pedal out turn. And, um, I, you know, I don't, I don't have the correct terminology, I'm sure, but uh, what I'm going to be doing is the same exact movements, but instead of pedaling into my turn, I'm going to pedal out of it, which is going to get the nose of the helicopter up, and allow me to roll at the last second, which will basically turn it into an S turn. And that, I think, is the fastest kind of landing. And if it's not the fastest, it's at least um, more unpredictable as far as somebody setting up to, to kill you as you land. So we're going to do that one more time, and then I'll show you my favorite place to do that for practice, or if you can pull it off in-game, it's pretty flashy, but almost wildly unnecessary. So, one more time, pedal out, combat landing. Approaching, high speed, staying low, getting ready to go on collective lower, initiate my turn, and pedaling out, slicing through the air like a knife, and rolling. You can do that twice if you like, but those little... Those little sharp turns really bleed the speed quickly and keep you unpredictable. So that was a, a hint of adaptive flying because I wasn't really planning to do a uh, uh, two pedal out turns. So I'm going to do one more with a single pedal out turn. Gaining some speed here, using gravity to my advantage, which is a subject I'm going to talk about in a second as well. super fast stop and uh, I highly recommend you pra practice that one because not only is it really fun to do uh, it can be very effective in game and once again it'll uh, it'll maybe maybe prevent getting actually hit at the last second where somebody is predicting your last few seconds of your landing and you suddenly change direction and uh, moreover I, I just think it's faster so I was mentioning gravity gravity just a second ago. So what we're going to do this time is try to take advantage of gravity and where you normally don't want to gain any altitude in doing a landing, if you can get down lower than your landing spot, that can actually be kind of helpful. So the water is a good example of that. And come in and finish. So, yeah, I had to I had to shut up there for a second. So using gravity to your advantage, if you can get down low and even start down low, um, then you can you can sort of create a half loop corkscrew type type landing. We're gonna try that from street level here. Go through town and then land somewhere like hospital or something. And all of this applies to doing tower landings, which I'm sure you want to know about.
We're going to be using gravity to our advantage. Throw in a little bit of an S turn there. Bob's your uncle. Out of there. Robert's your mother's brother, as they say in Eng Englandia. That's right, I went with that. Okay. We're going to go back to that Tower 3 landing. Come in nice and fast. I'm going to try to use gravity to our advantage. Skim those trees. Using gravity to our advantage. And then pedal out turn to slice through those houses like a knife. <laughs> a close one. Adaptive flying as best as an example as I can offer you. Alright. Those are the basics of landings. So you've got your standard combat landing with your high speed approach being collective lower, cyclic backward, and roll into your turn until you find yourself in the balanced state and roll back up to get some downforce from those blades, get some power out of those blades, and actually set down or better yet come to a hover. And then you have your pedal in turn which will create a sort of nose down spiral effect, get the tail up and out of the way, and be able to finish up your landing using just the pedals. And then you also have your pedal out turn, your pedal out landing, which allows you to snap into your final movements, which I would consider an advanced maneuver, but allows for uh, for some seriously sharp turning and bleeding speed. So landing on towers is really making use of all of the things that I've talked about, including the gravity that I failed to mention in the summary there, but um, with, with towers you want to stay as low as possible and gain altitude at the last second. And this is going to be, you know, a real understanding of how fast you're going and how quickly your helicopter is going to turn. And and then also using your feathering techniques, gaining small amounts of altitude, especially at the last second, pedaling in, and finishing up. So tower landings are really exactly the same thing as any other landing, but you have the advantage of using gravity and going against gravity to slow your uh, slow your momentum as much as possible. And But they are a little trickier for getting your timing right, and you really have to know how fast your helicopter is going to slow down and plan on that fact, and then also be an adaptive pilot and be ready to make last minute fine-tune adjustments that will rest you or hover you better yet right on top of the, the tower. Nice. So, tower landings. Accomplished. What else do you guys want to know about? If you have any uh, suggestions for uh, extensions of this tutorial series, please let me know. Um, I feel like we've covered the gist of all the landing stuff, but I haven't really talked about emergent landing zones, which is, uh, I'm not sure if that's really um, a proper technique. I'm sure in any military organization they would want you to land on the button. They'd want, you'd want to know exactly where you're going. Uh, because this is King of the Hill and we have two separate armies fi uh, fighting us, um, I, I say don't plan your landings at all, just basic areas where you want to insert and that should be good enough. So what that means is finding a landing zone at the last second, and I call that an emergent landing zone. Uh, I think it's best shown from coming in from the 
uh, op four side, if you will, coming in from the north end along the water. And you will see, as we roll in to the left, you will see streets line up and become available landing zones for us. I would call, I'd say that's the best example of an emergent landing zone. So keep watching and you'll see them just sort of open up and it's just like a whole bunch of spots. Nothing, 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 and then four. And these, these are fantastic places to put down right between a few houses that gives you some cover but wide enough that you can, you know, there's a certain margin of error that you are afforded by doing that. So let's come in, we'll check it, check it out again. And then we'll come from a few different sides and see if we can't find some new emergent landing zones. And emergent landing zones combined with adaptive flying techniques and also knowing how to do any other kind of piloting stuff is the key to doing combat landings, if you ask me. There they are, they just open up for you. Find yourself a spot and get in there. All right, let's try, let's try something we're not sure of. Let's just kind of, just, just land somewhere. And watch as the landing zones just open up as you slow down. They just become available. Pardon that one, that's a good example of me talking and flying, so maybe as I find a new emergent landing zone, I will be silent for just a moment. Alright. Not too bad. There's a good chance I would have at least broken the main rotor on that helicopter if this were in-game, or if I had had the damage back on again. But if I practice that enough times, perfect. And again, that's an emergent landing zone combining with um, adaptive flying techniques. So the last thing that I'll talk about in this particular segment is that King of the Hill specifically, and this is a King of the specific King of the Hill reference, um, it's going to be bad. You're gonna you're gonna get shot down. You're gonna get you know you're just gonna run into things. Even in game, even when you're as good as you could possibly be, if you're as good as me, that means you still crash. You know, occasionally at least, right? Or if you're having a bad day, a lot. So don't give up. Is the point of this? Don't give up because um, relentlessly bringing troops into the AO with landings is still better than paradropping. With paradropping, people hop out and they parachute slowly to the ground and get picked off one by one. And sometimes they don't. You know, people do get into the AO with paradrops. But not with, like, not with having a whole team beside them. And that's sort of the key and that's the reason for all this. So multiple attempts, and by multiple I mean infinite, just as long as you have the will to continue buying $800 helicopters, which is nothing in this game, um, and relentlessly, one after another, bring troops into the AO, your enemies will run out of ammo and have to reload before they can prevent you from uh, from getting in every time. So even if it takes four tries to get troops into the AO like this, on that fourth try, if they're off rearming their, you know, auto-aim rockets or whatever, so I call them that because I don't like them. It doesn't make sense in a video game to me, but uh, we'll talk about that in a totally different video. But they have to go and reload those things. They have to go and rearm their jet and Oftentimes, uh, jet pilots are not actually that good. You can tell the ones that are not good because they uh, they target spawns often enough, and those guys don't know how to shoot 
their guns at all. And uh, you can count on that fact to some extent. So if you just keep relentlessly trying to bring people into the AO, you will, uh, you will eventually be successful. And those groups of guys, if they're even a little bit careful, then they will create a new landing zone for you, a new area for you to keep bringing troops into, and your team will take over and win, as long as you keep doing it. So that last lesson there, long-winded as it was, was don't give up ever. Just keep trying and trying and trying. And one success in five is better than any pair drop. In my humble opinion. Keep flying, guys.